What's going on YouTube fam? Welcome back to another video and thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. Just real quick before I start getting into the explanation, I just want to just say real quick that uh, I'm actually really excited about this video. There's two main reasons for that. It's like a lot of people don't know um, and a lot of people watching this video don't know what I've been through recently and what my family has been through and you know where this car actually came from. So this actually belonged to my younger brother Joel uh, who recently passed away in November unexpectedly. Um, and I didn't really want to bring it up in the past videos. I didn't really want to talk about it because I, I personally was still dealing with it and still going through the process of healing. And obviously I will always be going through that process of healing, but I'm in a place right now where I feel a bit more comfortable being able to talk to you guys about it and actually, you know, say it on the channel. Um, you know, I'm not trying to make this video emotional or anything like that. And if you just want to skip to where we start talking about the install, you can just skip to this time right here that I'm gonna put on the screen but I'm really excited about being able to work on this car finally and uh, you know doing something to the car that I know Joel would have loved and uh, and it, it is it does bring me joy to be able to work on this car and possibly continue building this car for him in his memory with my other brothers is something that we talked about so i'm really excited about that but we're going to jump right into it and i know that there are a lot of videos on how to do brakes and rotors on this specific car but i feel like they don't show every single step but if you just watch this video through and you're going to do this yourself i'm going to show you every single step we're going to jump into the tools you're going to need so let's go ahead and do that right now Okay, so here laid out, I have pretty much everything you're gonna need. The obvious things, you're gonna need front rotors and a rear pair of rotors. You're gonna need uh, rear brake pads, front brake pads. And I decided to go with this brand. Uh, this car is gonna be daily driven. It is gonna be driven in the snow. It is gonna be driven in rainy conditions. And it's not really being tracked at the moment. So I went with something that is going to provide an OEM fit with protection from the harsh weather. It was not too expensive. You're gonna need something to remove your uh, wheels and lug nuts, some rags or some paper towel. You don't necessarily need this exact kit right here, which is to compress the pistons. Uh, you can use a C-clamp, which I'll also leave linked in the description. Um, so you don't need this kit, but I happen to have this, which is uh, comes in very handy, so I'm gonna use it. You're gonna need WD-40. You're going to need some brake cleaner um, any brand really whatever you can find a bunch of gloves I highly highly recommend getting yourself a breaker bar I don't recommend doing this job if you don't have a breaker bar because as a mechanic or uh, as a home mechanic I used to think that I didn't need this I ended up hating mechanics because I didn't have this tool right here this tool has made me fall in love again with working on cars simply because I'm not breaking my head trying to get bolts and nuts off. Get yourself a ratchet. When you're gonna need these three sizes right here, you're gonna need a 17, you're gonna need a 14 and a 12. Couple zip ties, something to cut the zip ties with. I highly recommend getting yourself a wired brush. It's not necessary, but highly recommend it so you can clean any of the dirty bolts. And these I have, just to make my job a little bit easier, this can be done without using these wrenches, but it does really help make it quicker. You don't need these, but it does help. You have a 17 again, 14 and a 12. But like I said, you don't need this. You could just do it with the ratchet and the sockets, but it's gonna just make my job a little bit easier. You're gonna need a rubber mallet or a hammer to uh, smash the rotor out. Having a bench really makes this job uh, much easier on your back. So I highly recommend that. Um, you don't need it, but it definitely helps. Uh, I'm gonna leave links in the description to most of these things that you see here. Some things you might just have to go out and get yourselves like this bench, but I will leave links to almost everything here. And I highly recommend getting an empty box or a cardboard so that you can spray the brakes in. Obviously, you're gonna need jack stands and a jack so that you can jack your car up. You can do each side individually. You don't need jack stands but this just makes the job way easier and we're all about trying to make this as painless as possible and make this go as smooth as possible so that you guys can enjoy working on cars now that we went over everything we're going to get started on the front so what i'm going to do is i'm going to explain to you pretty much the steps we're going to take first i'm going to be removing this bracket that is holding the actual pads in place by taking out two 14 mil bolts so this one here and there's one on the bottom down here that looks exactly like it that is holding that in place and that's going to allow me to take this out and then after that you're going to have two 17s you're going to need to remove that 17 and then the same one is going to be right underneath 
down here. So let's spray the four bolts that we're going to be removing with WD-40. We're also gonna spray WD-40 on this here uh, because this is usually what gets stuck when you're trying to remove this rotor. Grab your ratchet with your 14. This one should be easy to break. There you go. See, that one is very, very easy to break because that one only gets 20 pounds of torque. I'm gonna come in down here and do the same thing to the bottom. Sometimes this just comes out. If not, you might have to hit it with the mallet a couple times, so that's what I'm gonna do. Depending on how stuck your brakes are. There you go. I'll rest this up here for a second. Grab your two zip ties. If you don't have like a long zip tie, I'll show you guys a trick. Take two zip ties, put one end through here until you hear your couple clicks. Then you're gonna take your zip tie, you're gonna put it in through this hole here so that it's uh, not hanging from the on the brake line. This one's gonna take some force, because this one is a, it's about 49 pounds foot of torque, or something like that. Okay. You can grab your ratchet again. Then on this one, throw the 17. And you should be able to just easily take it off. Going on here. Now you see how crusty this bolt is? These bolts, these two bolts get really crusty like this. So you would just use that wire brush with a little bit of brake cleaner and just clean off all that crud that gets inside those grooves. The second bolt. This whole thing should just come out like that. And there is your bracket. And now you want to grab your mallet, you want to keep hitting it. Don't be afraid to hit it hard. I think uh, last time what worked for me was hitting it down here. Hit it a few times. Boom. Just like that, it should pop out. You guys saw it pop. Okay. There's your rotor. Now this here, uh, you can hit with some brake cleaner. Hit it with some brake cleaner. Hit your lugs, your lug bolts with some brake cleaner. And just clean it, clean the surface. Get around that groove, because a lot of brake dust builds up in there. A lot of companies, what they do is they'll grease it um, for when they are storing it so that it doesn't uh, have any rust. So we're going to take all that grease off by using some of the brake cleaner. just want to spray it down. Give it a good spray. Grab yourself some paper towels or a rag. Give it a good wipe. Put it over. Do the same thing to the back. Put it on the car, just kind of sit it in place like that. To hold it in place, what we'll do is we'll grab two lugs and we'll just put the lug nuts there so that I can hold it in place. Bracket. So as you can see, the old brake pads are still on it. Uh, and if you're looking at it like this, this is the way that it slides into the rotor. And if you notice, the brake pad with that small clip is the one that goes on the on the outside the other side has a clip with a little extension protrudes out this way that's how you know that this one goes on the back and as you can see both of them are on the bottom so the new brake pads came with new brackets so we are going to be throwing these brackets out we're going to be using the new brackets that came with the rotors and the brake pads you can take out the old brake pads throw them in the box 
take off the old brackets. And then we're gonna clean this the same way that we cleaned the hub. We're gonna spray it down with some brake cleaner and we're gonna hit it with the little wire brush. Okay, after struggling so much, I realized what the issue was. Uh, so you see this little tab up here? That's up, that little silver tab. You can push up on this, kind of pulling the bracket up into place. And I didn't realize that that's what that was for. So when you're putting these in, start by putting the bottom in first with the little clip. Once you have that in place, you line up the brake pad on the corner here and you push this tab back, you push this little tab back with the brake pad while using your thumb to hold this up. That way you can slip it in. Um, so it took me a few minutes, but I was, I finally kind of figured out how they go in there. So what I did, I left them on the edge, leaving some room so that it can slip into the caliper much easier. Now that's where this tool comes into play. Uh, but if you didn't have this tool and all you had was a C-clamp, you would use one of the old brake pads. You would just put it on those pistons back here and you would um, compress them by putting the other end of the C-clamp back here. You put the brake pad in front of this and you clamp and you kind of push down on these. But since I have this tool right here that my dad conveniently has, we're gonna be using this. this out of the way now that we have that compressed and you want to grab your two small bolts right here and also each each side of the car came with a little thing of uh, lubricant that we're going to be putting on the back of each uh, brake pad and on the two bolts that slip into here so let me just open this and I personally I like to put this on after uh, this is on the car, that way I don't risk getting any of that lubricant on the actual caliper. And I'm going to just line this up. So it's on there okay. <clears throat> so now that you have them on there, you want to grab your lube. You're gonna just place a little bit on the back here. Okay. So we're gonna come in here now with whatever you're going to use to cut the zip ties. Put the zip ties, push in the brake pads a little bit too since we had them on the corner. Okay. okay. Grab your uh, 14 mil bolts. it goes in there okay okay give it a good tighten now if you had a torque wrench that's where you would come in torque these down to 22 no is it 20 foot pounds of torque um and then the big bolts the 17s would get torqued down to 49 foot pounds of torque if i'm correct uh, but unfortunately i thought i had the right size torque wrench but i don't so i had to order one for now i'm just gonna hand tie in it the top obviously don't require as much torque for the big bolts the 17 that one requires a little bit more torque 
So these I'm gonna make sure that they're nice and tight. Okay. Do the same thing to the bottom. Okay. So once you've done that, once you torque them to spec. Uh, you're pretty much done with this side, and that's pretty much it for the front rotors and brake pads. Now we're going to move to the back, and I'll be showing you how to do that in the back. So in the back, it's pretty much the same exact process. You're going to spray everything down with WD-40. Then you have four bolts you're going to remove from the back. The only difference is there's no 17. Uh, they're both going to be 14 millimeter bolts. The cool thing about the rear is that uh, there is a 12 millimeter bolt here that's holding the brake line. Uh, that if you take that bolt out, that bolt fits in here perfectly and you can um, tighten it to remove the rotor. Make sure that you do release the emergency brake before you do the rears. So make sure your e-brake is down um, because that, that way you won't have the pressure holding this in. So you kind of have to release that pressure by releasing the e-brake. Cool thing about the back is this you can kind of just sit up here. Oh man, look at that, so easy man. I'm telling you. Having this breaker bar changes the just changes the whole game. Okay. And the bracket should just come out. And there you have. As you can see, the rear brake pads only have one um, low indicator, and that that one actually goes on the back towards the bottom. Now, if you guys remember that 12 mil bolt that I told you about, it's gonna be this bolt right here. And at that point, kinda just take it out. Make sure you remember to take that bolt out because you're gonna need to put it back. You wanna take that off of the old caliper I mean, uh, you want to take that off of the old rotor and pop it into the new one. Uh, and it just plugs into the only hole that it really fits into. All right guys, that's gonna be it for the video. As you saw, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section and I'll try to answer them for you guys. Be sure to subscribe, like, for more videos on the WRX and the BRZ. Remember to savage responsibly whatever it is that you guys do. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.